ஹாய் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு பிக்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் பெயிண்டிங்ஸ் லைக் இன் ஆல் மை ரீசன்ட் பெயிண்டிங்ஸ் ஐ அண்ட் ஷூட் தி பென்சில் ஸ்கெச் வாஸ் கிவன் அ லாட் ஆஃப் இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் பிஃபோர் ஐ ஸ்டார்ட் பெயிண்டிங் ஐ ட்ரை டு கெட் ஆஸ் மச் டீட்டெயில் ஆஸ் ஐ கேன் இன் தி ஸ்கெச்சிங் ஸ்டேஜ் இட் செல்ஃப் ஸோ தட் டியூரிங் பெயிண்டிங் ஐ டோன்ட் ஹவ் டு வரி அபவுட் தி ஃபார்ம்ஸ் அண்ட் ஜஸ்ட் திங்க் அபவுட் கெட்டிங் தி பெயிண்டிங் ரைட் இன் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் காக்கட்டு தி ஃபெதர்ஸ் வேர் வெரி ட்ரிக்கி ஸோ அகெயின் வைல் ஐ ஸ்கெச்ட் ஐ அண்ட் ஷூட் ஐ புட் தி ஃபெதர்ஸ் தி வே ஐ வுட் வாண்ட் இட் டியூரிங் பெயிண்டிங் ஃபாலோயிங் தி காண்டோர் பர்டிகுலர்லி அரவுண்ட் தி நெக் அண்ட் வேஸ்ட் ரீஜியன்ஸ் For the background, I used wet on wet technique, my favorite crimson lake and Prussian blue and then added a couple of water drops as the layer was drying which created the beautiful blooms in the background. The male cockatoos have beautiful red face. Here I have used scarlet red to get the effect. While I am not a big fan of black color, eyes are an exception for me. So for the eyes I have used ivory black. I always have a little bit of black left on my palette and I use use it when I have to darken colors uh, but never use it in the pure form except for eyes or really dark places. For the white I am using Chinese white. And for the beak it's again a wet on wet technique. I have used uh, paints gray here. The brown and yellow gives a good coloration and a variation to the beak when i started using it instantly i was in love with the combination i was getting and i knew the beak is going to work right off so in fact unlike my other birds i did not try to overpaint the beak i just left it with the basic colors and then later on once everything dried i went on to add a few more details I was a little nervous about painting the feathers at the start. The formation of the feathers were a little confusing at times, so I had to be really patient painting them one at a time. While I was uh, drawing from the reference photograph, I did not try to match uh, each and every feather uh, position. I interpreted the feather arrangement in my own way and then uh, tried to simplify it at times and then did not give too many edge information. I was a little worried it could make the entire image uh, very complex and buzzing so I wanted to keep the arrangement of the feathers but want to keep the details on the feathers as simple as I can I have never really used paints gray extensively so one thing I did in this particular painting is for the abdomen portion where the cockatoo had a warm tone in the feathers I added a little bit of yellow to the paints gray which gave a little warm tone and then for the wings and the neck region I added a blue tone to it this created a subtle difference and made it look very interesting and also I tried a couple of ways to paint the feathers I was more comfortable with outlining the feathers with the paints gray and then paint from inside till the tip leaving a white around the edges this made the process a lot more easier than what i thought it would be at the start and once a pass of the entire bird is painted i went on to add detailing i started with the face again added a few more details to the feathers in the face and then moved into the eyes and the beak the eyes and beak were almost there even in the first pass so just had to darken a little bit more and then add details to the eyelids and scratch marks on the beaks i really liked how the beak had come out the small little marks on the beak made it look realistic and then i moved on to the legs this is a place where i had a little challenge because the color on the legs and the background were almost similar so i tried adding a little bit more whites to the edges i wasn't very convinced so i darkened the background a little bit i was still not convinced so finally i added a touch of brown and then to an extent i was able to feel that the legs are standing out a bit 
At this stage the face and legs were completed. So I felt it was time to do one more pass on the feathers. So I went on and then added some more shadows. Uh, now that with the first pass giving clear indication of how the shadows are there, it was a lot more easier for me to know where to put the darks. At this stage I was happy with how the bird was coming. So I decided to move on to the, to the stem and the uh, berries. While they occupy a very small portion of the image, I really liked, enjoyed painting them. I felt making them look as realistic as the bird itself, but then without taking too much of our attention would be the key to how they gel with the image. My initial thought was to keep the berries translucent and bright, but then I decided against it because we want the attention to be going to the uh, cockatoo's face, not the berries. So eventually I made it a little bit more darker and uh, also I kept the tone very similar to the uh, bird's face but then slightly offset it. It has a little bit more purple to it compared to the uh, face. As one final step, I decided to add a little bit more darkness to some specific portion of the bird. So I chose the feathers around the neck and certain portion around the waist and darkened them a little bit more than the rest of the feathers. Uh, this was to break the uh, monotonous look of the feathers so that there is some variation within the uh, body. And that's it, we are done. If you like this painting and want to see a elaborate video, we have uploaded a three part video which runs for 30-35 minutes right from the sketching stage till the completion of the painting. You can take a look at that in our YouTube channel, Pictures and Paintings. See you soon in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.